When you think of any great horror icon like Freddy, Leatherface, Michael Myers, you know the guys. You also think of the sheer amount of times that you've seen them on screen. It's become part of their legacy to appear in extended movie runs, and while a couple of these sequels might be cult gems, a lot of them veer off into the ridiculous and make their antagonists far less scary in the process. It's kind of unavoidable, really, because if a character strikes a chord, a follow-up is all but guaranteed, and they will get milked until there is nothing left but dust for our personal entertainment. Oof, ouch. Of course, that is not always the way, though, as there are a few villains out there who are lucky enough to avoid the grim fate of death by sequel, coming to haunt our nightmares for one night and one night only. These baddies still have the power to creep people out by the good fortune of just never being sent to space. I am the one and done Ash from What Culture, and these are the 10 best horror movie villains who only appeared once. 10. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man – Ghostbusters If someone tasked you with choosing the form of a monster that will destroy the world, Mr. Stay Puff probably isn't the first image that would spring to mind. Or at least it wouldn't have been until we all saw Ghostbusters and would definitely pick that just for the banter. Sure, it is a funny visual when he emerges through the buildings, but that's part of what makes him so weirdly sinister. He wears a sweet smile the whole time he's stomping buildings and watching people flee in terror, trying his best to murder our heroes with a goopy, small-based vengeance. Whilst Ghostbusters is best remembered for the comedy elements, it was quite good at squeezing out scares too, if you think of the opening library scene in particular, and it combined both perfectly with this final showdown. Mr. Stay Puffed wasn't invited back for the sequel and became the butt of a silly sight gag in the reboot. The fact that he wasn't overexposed allowed him his perfect moment in the original, which is why he has become so iconic. 9. Mr. Babadook – The Babadook The Babadook is one of the best-reviewed horror films of recent years, following a lonely mother raising a bratty child as they're both haunted by a sinister figure called the Babadook. But that's Mr. Babadook to you! The film goes for psychological chills over gore, worming its way deep under the skin as each horrible noise ekes out of the pitch-black monster. The performances are a large part of why it works, but props must go out to the design of the Babadook himself, who looks like the love child of a 1920s German expressionist piece and Tim Burton's wet dream. His pop-up storybook is also a real chiller. Whilst the film and the character quickly became cult hits, director Jennifer Kent had it written into a deal that she kept the rights to the character, and is adamant a sequel will never happen. This is nothing but a good thing, since it's pretty hard to imagine Babadook being a Freddy-like boogeyman. We've already seen him get sassy enough when he was touted as the pride icon in recent years. Slay, Babadook! 8. Asami Yamazaki – Audition Audition came along during a golden era of Asian horror, which also brought us The Ring, The Grudge, and Ichi the Killer. If you accidentally started watching Audition, you might think it's a touching romance about a lonely man meeting a sweet woman, but as we all know, it takes quite a nosedive from there. It turns out this sweet woman has deep-rooted psychological issues from an abusive childhood, and enjoys nothing more than dismembering and torturing people she thinks have wronged her. Unfortunately for the lead, she feels this way about him, leading to an extensive torture scene in the climax that makes for queasy viewing. Even when she's torturing him, she keeps her charming demeanour, making it all the more unbearable to watch her get really stuck in. Whilst Audition had a lasting effect on the genre, influencing the likes of Wolf Creek and Hostel, it thankfully failed to launch the planned American remake. Asami will remain a one-hit wonder. 7. Molossar – The Keep the Keep is definitely the odd one out in director Michael Mann's filmography. He's best known for thrillers like Heat, Collateral, and The Insider, so a fantasy horror movie set during World War II definitely draws some attention. It's not his favourite either, and he disowned it once the studio took it out of his hands and brutally re-edited it. Of course, like anything of the sort, it's since become a major cult film thanks to the gorgeous visuals, sinister atmosphere, and Molossar himself, the monster at the centre of it all. Molossar is a vampire-like creature who sucks a life force out of his enemies, and his unique design combined with his love of inflicting pain and terror make him a memorable villain. The suit looks a bit awkward at times, but those who have seen The Keep will know the chill that Molossar gives lasts long after the credits roll. 6. The Doctor Cenobite – Hellbound Hellraiser 2 
Hellraiser hit its 10th installment in 2018, which is markedly depressing since it's been going straight to DVD since part 4. Poor Pinhead has been turned from an otherworldly being into a plush toy, and any power he had to terrify is long gone for those that stuck around after his first intense appearance. One Cenobite who managed to escape this mess with their dignity intact is the Dr. Cenobite, the weird psychiatrist who wanted to know what hell was like and got a first-class lesson. His makeover turned him into the most powerful demon in the series, even to the point where he actually slays Pinhead and his demon buddies. It's a combination of actor Ken Cranham's performance, the unnerving makeup, and the raspy voice that makes the Dr. Cenobite so freakish. Thankfully, the character's death in the finale of the film ruled him out of future sequels. For now, at least. 5. Elizabeth Shaw – Dead Silence Dead Silence is one of those films that is reviled by its own filmmakers, since James Wan and Lee Whannell had a crash course in Hollywood studio filmmaking that they did not like off the back of the success of Saw. Largely formulaic but still having some campy cult qualities to it, Billy the Doll is by far the best thing about the movie as he terrorizes the characters in a way that only a spooky ventriloquist dummy could. Which is particularly terrorsome, if you didn't already know. And of course, it is Elizabeth Shaw that is quite literally pulling the strings on his supernatural happenings, a vengeful spirit wrongly killed that is hunting down Jamie Ashen and his family. She's classically scary in that undead bride kind of way, leaving a trail of tongueless victims in her wake as she wreaks havoc on a small town community. The way the ghostly villain of this film operates is especially well done, but seeing her again would have only cheapened what is already an average horror movie. With just the one entry, both Shaw and the film itself are much stronger. 4. Dr. Decker – Nightbreed David Cronenberg is best known for scaring the crap out of audiences with the likes of The Fly, Scanners and Rabbit, but the Canadian creator occasionally ventures in front of the camera too. His biggest role was in Clive Barker's cult horror Nightbreed, where he plays Decker, the therapist of the lead character who also moonlights as a serial killer. Cronenberg absolutely nails the part, with Decker being smooth and clinical one moment before transforming into a crazed lunatic who wears a mask with button eyes the next. The mask is a creepy visual all on its own, but Cronenberg's performance really fleshes the character out. If the film had been a success, he probably would have returned for another round since the film ends with his character being resurrected with demon's blood. Sadly, Nightbreed was something of a bomb when it came out, despite being a cult favourite now. So the good doctor only got one outing. 3. Buffalo Bill – The Silence of the Lambs While Anthony Hopkins got all the kudos for Silence of the Lambs, he only appears for roughly 15 minutes. And he's not even the main villain! That honour goes to Ted Levine's Buffalo Bill. Bill kidnaps women, starves them, and then skins them to make a suit for himself, with Levine's deeply unsettling performance what makes him so memorable. From his mumbly voice, his fondness for good moisturiser practices, and his erotic dance to Goodbye Horses, he leaves as much of an imprint on the viewer as Dr. Lecter. He's a very human villain too though, so getting riddled with bullets at the climax counted him out of another appearance. He probably would have turned up in the Hannibal TV show eventually, but since the show was canned before it got that far, we'll never know. Which is a travesty. 2. The Wraith – It Follows It Follows has one of those simple but perfect horror concepts, where a teenager named Jay is passed a sexually transmitted curse, meaning she is constantly followed by a demon who can take the shape of anyone. Purposeful striding hasn't been this scary since Michael Myers went to his power walking class. The film milks this concept for all it is worth, as have I by putting it in a million lists, but still, it leads to some terrifically tense set pieces. No matter the form the it takes, be it an old lady or Jay's late father, the wraith always has the same blank, dead-eyed expression. Combined with its slow, steady pursuit and its total lack of backstory, this makes the creature massively unsettling. Despite being something of a hit, the studio behind It Follows hasn't mounted a sequel yet, and hopefully, they'll avoid the temptation since it really doesn't need one. Any more explanation or mythology would destroy the mystique. 1. David – The Lost Boys Kiefer Sutherland's star-making role as David finds him leading a group of young vampires, who try to lure another member into their clan. The monster makeup hasn't aged terribly well, but Sutherland is able to project through it with that famous voice of his. 
David is cruel and seductive in equal measure. And it's easy to see why his group would be attractive to join, cause hell, why wouldn't you want to be a nice little vampire with Keith Sutherland? While he appears to be killed in the final scene, the filmmakers kept their options open, since his body doesn't disintegrate like the other creatures of the night that get off throughout the movie. Talk of a sequel or prequel occasionally came up afterwards, but within a few years, the odds of him being able to play an immortal teenager again were slim, so the idea was thankfully dropped. Santa Carla's vampire population has thankfully been quelled for now. I hear the real estate is fine this time of year.